So, what the early church did was simply to recognize books which were already being rec uh, had already been circulated as authoritative in the early churches. Um, there is not an indication that church councils or church boards were simply arbitrarily grouping together the books which they deemed the most orthodox. There had been several hundred years prior, especially for the New Testament books, where um, this process of, of gradually discerning and circulating books and finding out in the churches which books were um, the ones that were had marks of inspiration. Um, did they have um, any uh, mark that they were written by an apostle or a prophet, someone who was called of God and who had been uh, understood by the church to be in that role? Um, it's not to say that the church was the selector, but it was more, um, the church was in the role of the confirmer. It was confirming a body of work uh, which was already being passed around as authoritative. Now, there were some other candidates, admittedly, at, at that point in time, such as the Shepherd of Hermas, um, and there were probably a few arguments, there was some discussion and discernment among early church members, but it just didn't quite have the same marks of authenticity um, and inspiration as other books. Now that's not to say that if someone didn't want to include the Shepherd of Hermas in their uh, Bible, um, they certainly could do so. But they would, um, as J.P. Holding writes in his book, Trusting the New Testament, really it's beholden on the one who wants to add further books um, to that canon, which, which have already taken several hundreds of years of, of forming uh, in terms of the best books, the ones which represent um, the uh, best uh, Word of God, the most inspired words of God. Um, they, and the Christian example of, of um, confirming the canon is really based on the old Jewish um, uh, notion of recognizing um, books that speak in an orthodox way about their faith, which was part of the, uh, New Te the Old Testament, excuse me. Um, so really it's just a repetition of that same uh, basic process that went on for the um, Jews in determining their scriptures. And really the reason why the intertestamental books for the most part did not make it into the canon was due to the 400 year intertestamental period where there was not a great deal of prophets speaking on behalf of the Lord. There wasn't even really that claim. And the ones that did make the claim, it sounded rather dubious because they basically borrowed old stories from the Old Testament books. They didn't really add anything new. There was, nothing, there was no new revelation, um, nothing newly inspired really at that point in time. Um, however, there is that distinction of those elect, uh, extra 11 or 14 books, um, depending on how you group the books together that are part of the Catholic Bible versus the Protestant Christian Bible. So in, to wrap things up, um, I would challenge uh, Mr. Blake to set forth the best reasons that he would have for um, simply adding additional books um, which were not recognized through the legitimate uh, channels in the early church. Uh, perhaps he has some other or different arguments for why those books um, should be placed in the Christian canon. What do we do, the critic might ask, with very late dates proposed for New Testament books? Does that throw a wrench in the works? Does that make it rather impossible, or at least implausible, to hold to the view that the canon was not uh, just thrown together to support the Orthodox Christian position when the going got tough? and there were uh, multiple uh, competitors um, to, to Christianity in the early church environment, uh, the early Roman Empire environment. Not necessarily. That argument does not necessarily hold water. One can still hold to later dates. Uh, for example, let's take the book of Revelation, the Apocalypse of St. John. Different dates have been proposed, an early date, 65 AD, and a late date at 90 AD, maybe even 95 for some critics. Um, that will not determine um, 
the, that the formation of the canon is invalid. Now it just so happens that the book of Revelation was debated and it was discussed a little bit before it entered the canon, but that just showed that there was discernment on the part of the early believers and they weren't, they were a little bit suspicious. They were not just grasping at any book uh, which they might use to support their orthodox position um, in order to solidify their defenses against the Roman Empire when the Roman Empire wanted to include all the gods together in the pantheon. This demonstrates that they were looking into the issues behind the authorship of the book, um, the content of the book. Was it something that was really um, inspired? Um, was it, was it a, a forgery? Was it something that was including just older Christian traditions um, and not really adding anything um, novel, any new revelation? Um, so those sorts of considerations were made at that point in time. So it doesn't necessarily dilute the canon to say that certain books in the New Testament canon were given a late date.